uh, I'm Patrick Parker, the CEO of EmpowerID. Uh, this is just a demo, a quick POC we put together uh, for the Microsoft engineering team uh, to show how we could integrate and extend Azure identity governance uh, in risk capabilities. So EmpowerID has an Azure AD connector that's really deep right now. Um, it, it's a skim uh, app service that's deployed into your tenants. Um, and from using it, we can inventory all the way down, basically all the Azure structure, the users, groups, service principles, managed identities, applications, conditional access policies, app certificates, app secrets, uh, basically everything. And we can also have workflows for creating and managing. So we leverage a lot of existing functionality here. Uh, and the solution, the idea is that if a user is requesting something from identity governance, uh, how can you do a detailed risk analysis? Because of nesting and lots of relationships, you never really know directly what would be the result that that access would give you if you were to request to be put, in, put into a specific group. Uh, so in our example here, we deployed a logic app in our Azure tenant. We set up some uh, access packages, and the Logic app uh, is tied in as an extension to the uh, event for requesting access. And what it does is it calls out and runs an EmpowerID workflow, uh, an EmpowerID SaaS on-premise, wherever it might be. Uh, the EmpowerID workflow runs the request through a risk analysis, which evaluates all of the existing access that person has uh, all of the access that this would grant them directly and inherited access. And then if it triggers uh, a risk policy as a violation, either a segregation of duties, you know, the typical, let's say you can't be an external untrusted partner identity and have global admin rights or something, two sides of the equation, or just critical or sensitive access, meaning that it's a risk if you have this access no matter what, uh, like being a global admin is a risk itself. Here we see it generates a workflow approval task, um, and the task can go for multiple levels of approval if desired, you know, any number of levels. Uh, in this case, it's a simple policy where it goes to the owner of the thing being requested, and in this example, a group. And then if a risk violation gets triggered or detected, uh, the risk owner gets a task activated for them to choose whether to reject the risk or to mitigate uh, and accept the risk and approve it, assigning mitigating controls. And then we could feed the, the answer back to Azure. That's actually, that's the hope. So just t switching gears here, let's go look at the web interface. So I'll come in here, I will request access. We've set up some access packages. Uh, so this one is a low security access package, common access without any obvious security concerns. So of course, uh, the devil's in the details. It has a low security group, no need to worry about this group. It's safe, no risky access. So I'm going to request to be a member. This is a simple example. I'll give you a more complex example in a moment. Say for uh, working with servers, with uh, paper, not servers or anything risky. Okay, just paper. I need to work with paper. And I'm going to submit this. And now, of course, this is going to call the uh, Logic app which is going to call the EmpowerID workflow. If we look here, here is the EmpowerID workflow calls. Uh, this is EmpowerID's .NET C-sharp based low code application platform called Workflow Studio. Um, in here, you can create uh, almost anything. You can create workflows, you can create user interfaces, um, Azure functions, Azure app services, Azure web jobs, uh, lots of different things. And of course, one of those is workflows and bot flows. So in this particular case, we have it uh, generating a proactive message just to show we're receiving the request uh, from the, uh, the access package. And it is going to uh, evaluate it through the risk engine. And then it's going to let the user know, hey, there was a request received that went for risk analysis. And then it's going to check and see what happened, if it got auto approved, no risk, or if it went for approval. Uh, if it goes for approval, then it's going to show the user a hero card in the box to let them know, here's a link if you want to go check on it. Okay, at this point, I would receive a notification. The first one was that my access package and my request number has been generated. Uh, that's gone for low, uh, my low security request has gone for risk analysis to let me know that it's being evaluated. 
uh, and then immediately came back that my request has been submitted, that this one actually went for approval. So it gave me a link in the bot to go take a look at my request. So this is Empowerity's My Tasks microservice app. Uh, you could use this on your mobile phone or anywhere. We can see Patrick requested in Azure the access package. He requested it for himself. Uh, it could show me if I request it for somebody else or, or vice versa. And we'll see here that it flagged a risk. So the access that actually would violate our policy, all access in a production Azure Active Directory tenant. Uh, we can see the details on that, our group, and it's a critical risk. Now, I am the owner of this group, so we're actually at the owner's approval step. So I'm one of the owners that could approve this. Of course, you could, since I'm requesting it, you could configure the option to say, remove me from the list of potential approvers, but I left it in here for demo. Uh, and then once I approve this, it will get routed to the next step, okay, in the process. And this one just has two. And this is the risk step, which got triggered uh, because there was a risk violation. And this would get routed to the risk owner for this particular risk, which is uh, critical access in a production Azure Active Directory. Okay, so now I switch browsers. I'm in as my risk admin. Uh, if I look at the list of to-do items, we see this new Azure Access Package request, low security, one application role, which is a group, uh, pending. I can see who else had approved it at various steps. It looks like uh, Patrick had approved it, who is the owner. I can see the comments, of course. And I can come down here and view, inspect the risk and dig into it. Uh, in this case, I just simply want to say, it's okay. I'm going to mitigate the risk. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna mitigate it that they're allowed to have this risk, let's say for one year. So let's pick 2023. Uh, let's pick April and today. Oops. One year, sorry about that, 2023, uh, April, and six. Okay, so I'll mitigate it for a year. After a year, it's gonna pick this back up as an expiring mitigation and send it for approval again for somebody to extend it or renew it. I'm gonna say we're going to perform a quarterly review of their access, and we're gonna review the audit log transactions monthly to make sure they're using this appropriately. Is okay with mitigation. So now they'll have a record of this, who accepted this risk, the risk owner, uh, that it's mitigated, how we're mitigating it, for how long. And of course, this workflow would then move ahead to any subsequent steps, or as in this case, it's the final step that so would go on for fulfillment and uh, finish granting the access. Okay, switching back to report view for auditors, we see the list of mitigations that the, uh, Patrick was the violator for this risk. The at risk admin was the mitigator. I could go view the request. Uh, the mitigation is still active and it's valid from this date to this date for this type. Here's the comments. And I'm still violating the risk. If at some point I'm not violating the risk, it keeps the mitigation, but it'll let me know as, a, as an auditor that I'm no longer violating this particular risk. Maybe I lost that access. So that's it from an auditor perspective. You can produce this for the external auditors to show that you're meeting all your compliance objectives. And when this expires or before it expires, it'll get picked back up by the workflow engine and, and as a recertification task to recertify uh, this mitigation and, and renew it if necessary. Okay, so your next question would be, well, why did it trigger that violation that that would give me all access in Azure if it was just a regular group uh, that low security group, how did we catch that? Well, in PowerID uh, for Azure, we're getting all the data, uh, if, if you have that enabled. So, and for all your tenants, dev, prod. So here's our, our contractor's tenant. We're getting all the subscriptions, the resource groups. Uh, we're getting all of the delegations of various RBAC roles and where they're scoped at for users groups, service principles, managed identities. Um, of course, we get all the RBAC roles for all your tenants and their membership. Uh, or assignments, we get all the AD directory roles, including custom, you can create your own custom roles if you want. Uh, but if I go here, global administrator for contractors, if I pick the right one, the reason we have that is because we have a functional access policy that we know, first off, what does it mean to be a global admin? Well, it allows you to do these functions, and here's the risk of those functions. You can create groups, you can create roles, you have all access in a SAS directory, you can delete data, 
So these are functions that it figures out based on the permissions granted, the fine-grained rights, what you're allowed to do. So it'll know every uh, role in the system that has the rights that would allow to create groups. And of course, then the members would have the right to perform that function. So if we look here at our global admin, we can see all of the members. And of course, it knows that our low security group is a member. And therefore, if we go to the low security group, we can see on the optimized tab, um, it's not very optimized. It's not just in time membership. It's permanent membership. It's not eligibility. So that's not good. Um, but if we look down at the functional access, we see that it would allow someone to have all access in the Azure contractors tenant, which is a critical risk. So we know because we have all the data and all the permissions, we know exactly no matter how you're get what you're requesting, what are the consequences of that action and what functional or risk policies would it violate to bubble it up and to catch it. Okay, that's it. Thanks, everybody.